17. It is day three here on the show floor, and the action has not stopped. There are people everywhere. There are games being played all over the place, and this is no exception up here on the stage. We've got Mother Gunship up with Joe Mirabello, our game director here. Joe, welcome to the stage. Uh, how you doing? Fine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm no. excited to show off Mother Gunship. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about this game. Uh, so Mother Gunship is a fast-paced, roguelite-ish shooter uh, with probably the most bonkers crafting system you've ever seen in a first-person shooter. I, I like crafting systems. That's that, uh, And you don't normally hear like crafting systems in first-person shooters, so you, you've definitely piqued our interest already. Yeah, well, most first-person shooters are not as over-the-top as this one is. Uh, I mean, even in the most over-the-top shooters, uh, crafting tends to be a little bit more, uh, I guess you'd say, sedated. Sure, So sure. I'll show that off in a minute, and you'll get to see how bonkers this gets. Um, okay. The basic gist of the game is that your uh, aliens have invaded Earth, and you're fighting through their armada one ship at a time. Each level is a randomly generated ship that you're fighting through. Oh, wow. Uh, so along the way, you're going to fight, you know, hordes and hordes and hordes of these robotic enemies uh, and uh, face off against some pretty gigantic bosses, either solo or with a friend in full co-op. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good to know. So, I mean, and that experience will change pretty much if I decided to go through it again uh, because you randomize the levels? So. Yes. Yeah. Each time you try through the missions, well, each mission has its own theme as well, but then uh, the missions themselves are randomly generated in that they will always be surprising to you. You're not going to be uh, seeing the same stuff twice. Sure. Uh, actually, speaking of that, I just saw a secret over here, that flashing. That caught my eye, so went in there, grabbed an extra jump. You actually start with triple jump, but I just got another one, so now I have four jumps. I can go around like crazy. Oh, nice. Flying nice. around all over the place. Um, also a part of the randomization, I assume. Uh, the it, secrets. The, yes, the yeah. secret. Yes, so there's a whole lot of like layers of uh, randomization on top of the core level itself. So, um, you know, the player will constantly be surprised with what they're seeing, and that uh, feeds into the philosophy of the game where we're trying to, to make sure that the player kind of sees things that are a little bit unique to this game, a little bit more... Um, it's almost like a first-person shooter Contra, if you will, and that thing's Got it. really over the top. So, so this is the shop, this is the crafting menu right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So most craftings in first-person shooters are more quiet, where it's like, you know, you add a scope, you add a sure. you add a, a stock, you change the color or something. Here, it's like, let's take more inspiration from a um, uh, something more like those space sim games where you're building a ship that you add engines to or thrusters right. or wings. It, this is like that, only with your gun. Oh. So there's only a couple rules. The rules are that you need to have a piece that fits, um, so if I were to uh, really quickly go over here, you can see that some of these pieces don't fit. Right. And the okay. other rule is barrels need to face forward. <laughs> so, <we laughs> that makes sense. Yes. Probably not towards you, right? <laughs> right. You. Uh, so we actually tried it the other way. We actually tried it so that you had barrels that didn't face forward, and it's more fun on paper than it was in the game itself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's actually just build something really quick here. I'm going to add some quick connectors. Is there any, like, point value assigned to certain things, or or is those the only two criteria that you kind of threw out there? Like, for example, is this this weapon can only be 30 points, and each piece you add, like, kind of adds another? Well, there are those, those are the only hard limits. Uh, however, so you could build something that has like 30 barrels if you wanted to across. In fact, we have guns that have had barrels to go across the entire screen, the entire perimeter. <laughs> yeah, we nicknamed it the window. But the thing <laughs> is that every piece you add costs a little bit more to fire. So oh, you could build. Oh, okay. So there's build a that crazy gun. Yeah, yeah. It, you just may only be able to fire it once. This looks pretty crazy. I have to question the weight distribution of this. No, <laughs> no. Actually, it's stacked very nicely. Yeah. So it's like, one-handed. It is. Yes. You do, could you dual wield? Uh, like that? Yes, actually, uh, we'll probably get our second weapon in uh, the next room because I happen to know what this demo has. <laughs> so yes, it's uh, this. This normally the player will actually be able to do a wield right from the beginning, and they can craft anything they want um, right from the get go. Uh, but we just have the second weapon turned off for this first experience. Um, but uh, like you see, I added all these barrels. Yeah. I can then also go in and add pieces that modify the entire gun. So that's I select that gun right here, and I select. Uh, we'll pick the socket over here. And I add some caps. Um, you can modify the entire gun in cool ways. So like a good example would be this one just adds increased fire rate. However, some get a little bit more crazy like this one right here. Add some bounciness to it. So now this entire <laughs> gun, everything this gun fires will bounce all over the place. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, actually, it didn't. Did I not add it? But no. it, what it, I mean? that's, it, in, that's in that intent. case, like if you did increase, say, the fire rate, which I saw that was one of, but that also means your energy consumption. Well, exactly. Those right. pieces yeah. are actually, they, they get pretty expensive pretty quick because they affect the entire gun. Maybe sure. I added the wrong piece there. But uh, my favorite example of that in practice, actually, let's just keep moving to the demo so we can actually hit the boss. Um, my favorite example of that in practice has been uh, earlier in the show, somebody had a flamethrower. And they were like, what happens if I add a bounce mod to the flamethrower? <laughs> and it was pretty cool because, you know, the flames are bouncing off over, oh, wow. over all the walls and everything. And so the entire room was getting filled with fire. Uh, and it was pretty surprising. It was emergent. I like the kind of crafting system where the 
uh, player is able to surprise themselves. Right. Well, I mean, in, in games like this, too, it's always, you know, I, I feel like I've been gaming for a million years now, and, and, like, I know how I like to play games, right? And so anything that offers me a little bit more flexibility and sort of like, well, tailor it to how you like to play, right? I, I, I would probably do things that I would never run out of energy with, but, you know, would, would give me, like, you know, a lot of mobility and just a, a lot of a lot of fire. And I saw, like, there was a speed boost oh, yes. and, and there whatnot. Oh, yeah, there are for that. Yep. I like that. I like that concept. And, you know, I think that kind of flexibility and customization is really cool. Our basic attitude is give the design or give the player the toys they need to mess with and then get out of the way mm. and, and let them discover things along the way. Um, so are all of the weapons energy based or? <clears throat> they're all energy based off of that meter. However, you okay. can upgrade that meter. Oh, there's my left handed gun right there. Um, oh, these ones are bouncing. Those all look like the they're bouncing. Yeah. yeah, those have bounce built in. Um, so there is, it's all energy-based, however you can upgrade that uh, in your headquarters. And just because they all feed off of the same battery doesn't mean that they're all like energy projectiles. We do have other kinds right. of projectiles in the gun, other kinds of barrels you can get, like lasers and stuff, um, and uh, more shrapnel-y kinds of things, things that have more, more like rocket-type stuff. So there's, there's plenty of different things. And the cool thing is that every single piece that we add increases the uh, permutations for the entire system. So. Every single piece we add to the game means that you can have you know, a million more kinds of guns that the player can make. So we really, we're going to discover all sorts of things. And as a designer, I'm like stepping back and being like, I don't know what the players are going to build. They're going to build some <laughs> wacky stuff. And I am OK with that. So we're actually about to get into the boss room right here. All right. uh, I have no idea how well this gun will do. We'll find out. <laughs> now, I see the UI here. I like how clean it is and open it is. What's the top two uh, numbers right there? You have a yellow and then a purple? Oh, that's gold and then experience. You use the experience in the uh, headquarters. So in between each mission, you go back to the headquarters to... I'm going to run. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, in, in between each mission, you go back to your headquarters where you can upgrade the amount of energy you have for your gun, your run speed, your jumps. Uh, all of your starting stats can be adjusted there. Uh, so we try and give the player a bit of a meta progression sense, um, and then they can go pick which mission they want to go fight in. So you can see I'm burning out of energy here because uh, that gun on the right takes so much energy to fire. I'm running again. Um, so uh, that that headquarters basically becomes the meta progression uh, central. It's a little bit like Darkest Dungeon in that regards, where you're you're able to kind of plan how you want to handle the next mission, um, as well as find upgrades along the way. So I think we're going to be able to take, take this thing down. This gun is powerful. So uh, my like, if I advance to the next stage, I will keep my gun load out. But if I restart my sort of playthrough, then I would kind of uh, you know start from base one. Well, you actually the the stuff that happens in the headquarters is permanent. Uh, okay. So you upgrade okay. your permanent oh. stats there, and then anything you have in the middle of the run that you find, like that extra upgrade for jumping that I found earlier. That stuff that's more transient, and that if I die goes okay. away, or if I win goes okay. away. So the headquarters is more like, okay, for this next mission, it's going to all take place on a foundry ship. I know that the floor is going to be entirely lava. I'm going to want some extra jumps, so I'll go turn on my extra jumps there. So I start with six instead of three. Got it. Uh, I am going to book all the way to the end. So right now I'm cruising through the air, man. I've got six jumps, and I'm hitting these bounce things that replenish my jumps as I go, and I'm going to make it all the way over to this platform here. Nice. That guy is way back there. I can just unload on him. Now, uh, and there he goes. Now he's down. You got him. And uh, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, Future Man Gaming actually called it out. He's like, oh, it reminds me of that that tunnel creature from Labyrinth. And you said that, like, that was a little bit of the inspiration. Do, are we going to find more of interesting inspirations uh, throughout the game? Well, there's plenty of things I've got in mind, yes. Okay. Uh, I was, I mean, I've, I've loved Labyrinth my whole life, and I've always wanted to build a tunnel crawler boss like that, and I'm, I'm happy I finally could. I think it's uh, awesome. But I don't think it's possible for me to make a game and not inject some of uh, the inspirations I've had throughout my life. Of course, that's yeah. what makes development so great, too, right? <laughs> right. So that's, uh, basically, that's the, the demo I have prepared for you guys. Uh, awesome. This right here is the self-destruct button. Every single mission ends in uh, you destroying that ship, so... Got to get um, the job done. Got to get the job done. You can see the amount of enemies I killed, oh. the, the damage I caused, the shots fired. How many shots did I fire with that gun? That left gun with all those green projectiles, about almost 2,000 shots. So oh, it keeps track of your jumps, too. Keeps track of a lot of stuff, yes. Interesting. Um, and then we, we use that to uh, to rank the player. In, in are, are there any, you know, with the co-op aspect, which I think is really cool, are there any, uh, are there any like, 
leaderboard? You know, like, do you see this as maybe being something that, like, oh, speedrunners might actually love this whole thing, and you finding out what guns will get them through the fastest? And well, yes, we have to be a little bit careful with that, but yes, I, I love the idea of, of allowing speedrunners to enjoy this game in creative ways. And the way that you have to do that is you have to make sure that speedrunners can recreate the environments. With a randomized game, right? Of course, you have to be a little bit careful with how you handle that. So right. you would have things like daily missions or got it, uh, got endless it. missions okay. or even locked progression missions. And so they're like, okay, I want to get the best time possible with uh, with a certain kind of gun uh, or with a certain kind of, of mission set. Excellent. So, Excellent. Um, yeah. Well, where can people go to find out more about the game? Uh, have you have you like uh, landed on a on a date yet? Are we looking for later this year, next year? Next year, 2018. Okay. We haven't said date yet, but uh, go ahead and actually tell you can sign up for the mailing list at mothergunship.com and. Uh, that's where you can find out more information about the game and information about closed betas in the future. Uh, it's actually, you can wishlist it on Steam. If you're a Steam player, it's not out for purchase yet, but if you wishlist it, then uh, then that helps us out. It's a good thing to do. Yeah, we'll go <laughs> check it out. If you've enjoyed the time here, Joe, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you, for you having uh, me. bringing Mother Gunship. And uh, we've got more coming at you live here from PAX West 2017. Don't go away. We'll be right back.